Hey guys, this is the much anticipated rise and fall of AC Milan. Before I get into that, there's been a bit of news um, recently in football. Tottenham Hotspur are apparently in talks with a takeover estimated worth £1 billion with an American company. At first the talks were denied but the American company has confirmed that these talks are ongoing. Tottenham Hotspur are also due to move to a different stadium for the next year for White Hart Lane to go under some reconstruction. I don't know what stadium that would be, if I was to guess I would say either Wembley or the Olympic Stadium, although I think the Wembley Olympic Stadium is extremely unlikely when West Ham are obviously going to be moving into that stadium fairly soon and they're, they're, I do not think they'll be sharing with Arsenal, the Emirates or Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, so I think that Wembley would be the only sensible one. So, to get down to it, AC Milan were founded in 1899, they've won 18 Serie A titles, they've also won the European Cup seven times, they won it in 63, 69, 89 and 90 under Arrigo Sacchi, 94, 2003 and 2007 was the last time they won it. The last time they won the Scudetto was 2010-2011, which wasn't all that long ago. Arrigo Saki was the AC Milan manager from 87 to 91. He won two European Cups back to back and the Scudetto. And the squad for the match against Bucharest was Galli in goals, Sotti at right back. Paolo Maldini at left back, Costa Kurt and Baresi at centre back, Colombo at the right midfield, Frank Rijkaard and Carlo Ancelotti in the middle, Robert Donadoni on the left hand side, Marco van Basten up front and Rutil at playing just off him. And in that game they beat in, they beat Steyr Bucharest 4-0. An incredible result. The 1990 European Cup final was against Benfica. And the team was not too much different. On the left hand side, Alberto Ivani was playing. Carlo Ancelotti, Ancelotti was on the right. So, Boban dropped out and. So did Dias. And they beat Benfica 1 0 in that final. And in 1994, which arguably is one of the greatest European Cup finals in history. AC Milan beat Barcelona by four goals to nil. Now this was no pure Barcelona side. This was a Barcelona side. They had Zubiz Zubiz in goals. You had Albert Ferreira at right back, Coleman and Nadal at centre back, Sergi on the left, Guardiola and Baquero and Amor as a midfield three, and the front three of his Stoichkov on the right, Bergström on the left, and Romario through the middle. AC Milan had Sebastiano Rossi in goals, Tassotti at right back. Gali and Paolo Maldini at centre back, Christian Panucci at left back, Zivimir Boban at right midfield, Dimitrio Albertini at centre midfield with Marcel Desailly, Roberto Donadoni in the left midfield, and Dejan Savasevic up front with Daniele Massaro. And that was under Fabio Capello. Fabio Capello was there from 91 to 1996, won the Serie A in 1992, 93, 94, not 95, and 96. <coughs> AC Milan then went on to win it, as I said, in 2003-2007. In 2003, they beat Juventus in what I would describe as one of the most boring European Cup finals I've seen before. It was 0-0 all the way through and then went to a penalty share, which AC Milan defeated Juventus in. In 2007, AC Milan played Liverpool in the final. Liverpool was the team that beat AC Milan in 2005 for the European Cup. In what was one of the best games you have ever seen. AC Milan were 3-0 up at half time. Liverpool fought back to draw 3-3 and the game went to penalties and AC Milan lost to Liverpool on penalties with Shevchenko famously missing a penalty in what would be his final appearance for the club. Liverpool then bid battle of AC Milan again in 2007 and AC Milan would come out on top by two goals to one. In the first final, it would be argued that AC Milan were the better team. The second final, Liverpool were the better team, but it was roles reversal. Liverpool won the first one, AC Milan won the second one. AC Milan have won the second amount of European Cups after Real Madrid. So, all sounds pretty good so far. But where the kind of false start to happen, I believe, is in, 19, in 2006, 
there was the whole match fixing scandal in Syria. AC Milan, Juventus, Regina, Lazio, and Fiorentina were all involved. Fiorentina were banned for the next season's Champions League. Juventus were banned for next season's Champions League, were relegated and were stripped of the two titles that they had won previously. Lazio were banned from playing in the UEFA Cup. AC Milan were given a 30 points deduction from that season, but that still meant they were, meant they were eligible to qualify fourth place, which got them into the Champions League qualifying third round. And AC Milan were able to win this tournament, as um, you know. So, since 2000, 2006, there was, there was a bit of a fall for AC Milan. They won the 2007 European Cup, and that was, that was fantastic for them, as well as Italy winning the 2006 World Cup. And then Italian football started to kind of go on the downward spiral. Juventus, when they came back to Syria, it took them a few years to get themselves back up there, but Juventus have won the last two or three Serie A's. AC Milan last won it in 2010-2011. Interestingly, the players that were there, Pato uh, was sold, Maldini retired, Cattuso retired, Nesta retired, Flamini left, Zambrotta retired, Pirlo was released and signed by Juventus and they won the league with him there and he was also fantastic for Italy. Zambrotta retired, Kevin Prince Boateng was sold, Thiago Silva was sold, Ronaldinho was sold to Brazil, but Ronaldinho's best years were looking well but well well gone. Van Bommel retired. Ibrahimovic was sold to Paris Saint Germain. Seydorf left to go to Botafogo and also came back as manager, which I'll go over in a minute. Balotelli is gone. He signed for Liverpool season for sixteen million and Kaka was gone as well. Again his best years were behind him too. The alarm bells start to ring here for me with AC Milan. Aviati was their number one for the last couple of seasons. Now Abiati has been at AC Milan for many, many years and he was never number one. There was always somebody ahead of him, whether it was Rossi, whether it was Dida, there was always somebody ahead of Abiati. So the fact they made him number one was a bit alarming for me. He was always that deputy or they put him out on loan. Um, of course, for the next season, they signed Diego Lopez from Real Madrid, which is a very sensible sign. He's their number one. The problem with AC Milan and why I think they've had such a fall is from the team that Ancelotti built, which was a very good team, consisting of players like Shevchenko, Gattuso, Sedor, Kaká, and obviously Maldini was still there at that point, Nesta as well, is that AC Milan didn't do the transition quick enough of phasing out some of the, some of the older players, not all of them, but some of the older players and getting in the younger talent. And a lot of these players left at the same time and AC Milan struggled really to build a team that could continue to compete. And with all the scandal with Berlusconi, he obviously was a former Italian Prime Minister and for a couple of years wasn't, was, was the honorary president of AC Milan but was not involved in club matters. And now I believe that he might well be back involved in club matters, I'm not really too sure about that. But the alarm, the alarm bell comes for AC Milan with some of their signings. They signed Tarabit on loan from Queen's Park Rangers last season. Now he's actually done really well at AC Milan, but he wasn't looking that great at QPR. I would be very concerned that a club as big as AC Milan would be signing a player who, to be honest, shouldn't really be good enough for AC Milan, although he has done really well for them on loan. They also signed Michael Essien, from Chelsea and Michael Essien for me after the injury problems in his last season in Chelsea looked like he was a player who best years were long behind him I didn't understand that signing they also signed they also signed Pazzini who is I think there's their number one striker now Pazzini is a is a decent strike is a decent goal scorer but in my opinion he's not really good enough to kind of lead your line. He needs to have someone alongside him and AC Milan seems to be lacking in that department massively. And then it comes to the recent time which is what I based this video on of Fernando Torres on a two year loan. Fernando Torres, ever since he joined Chelsea and even in his last season at Liverpool, was looking a, a different player and not in a good way. He was a very good player for Liverpool, very good player for Atletico Madrid. 
but injuries and loss of form, and he's, he's never regained it. Chelsea inexplicably paid £50 million for him. I know Casey Mann aren't paying any money for him, but I don't think he's going to do anything for them. And I would just be very concerned being an AC Milan fan, seeing the signings and the direction that the club is going in. And it doesn't seem to be getting any better. Last season they had Clarence Seedorf as manager. He seemed to be turning things around. They seemed to be picking over from Allegri. He seemed to be getting some results and taking the club forward. But they got rid of him due to, I think some of the players didn't get on with him and signings as well. I would agree with the signings part. Some of the signings weren't good enough. But they now brought in Filippo and Zaghi, again a former player, who's doing well with the youth team, but does that really qualify him to manage a team like AC Milan? I wouldn't have said so. Ever since Ancelotti's left, AC Milan have made some bad appointments. Leonardo was appointed as manager and did a terrible, a terrible job in my opinion, and then he was into a Milan manager a couple of seasons after that and did an equally as bad job. AC Milan's current squad consists of Diego Lopez is in goals, Aviati is probably going to be the backup, Basilio at right back, Mexes at centre back, Rami at centre back, and Albert Tazi left back, Zapata at centre back, Abate right back, Bonera centre back, Pablo Romero left back, Alex centre back, who's a good signing, Sicardo centre back, then midfield they've got Muntari, Safanara, Kazuki Honda, who they got in a free transfer to TSK Moscow, was a very good signing. Andrea Foley, Ricardo Montalivo, Marco Van Hinkle is on loan from Chelsea, again another player on loan. Bonaventura and Nigel de Jong, this again is a good signing. Jeremy Menez, Fernando Torres, Pazzini, Niang, El Shawari and Mastur. You know, I look at this team and th this is a team that should be good enough to really compete with Juventus or Serie but for some reason they're just not really able, able to get up there. There's a lot of players that are really, real good players. And for me, the, the, the combination with AC Milan is a lack of, a lack of funds in Italian football in general, bad managerial appointments, and, you know, it's, it's, it's just a shame to see a club as great as AC Milan and as successful as AC Milan going through this time at the moment. They're not in this season's Champions League which would ring alarm bells for me. They weren't in the season before that as well. A team like AC Milan should always be in the Champions League, especially since they're seven times the winners of the European Cup. Hopefully, Serie A has another boom period and gets back up to the top. They had done a little bit of a boom period after the match-fixing scandal, and then things quickly went downhill again. Hopefully, they can get back to the top because it is a shame to see a club as great as AC Milan in the position they're in. Okay, well that's it for this video. Um, if any Tottenham fans would like to get in touch about what's happening with their club with the takeover and the stadium thing could maybe enlighten me of what stadium they're going to be playing in for next season. Um, and anyone that has any requests or any videos they'd like to see then just give me a shout. But that's it for this video and I will do one probably after the premiership results. Okay, bye.